We were expecting an announcement from Jack King, the voice of... Uh, this is Gemini Control Lines Control, T-minus four minutes and counting, T-minus four. We will be going into a planned built-in hold at the three-minute mark in the count. Duration of the hold, about four and a half minutes. Aiming toward an ignition of the Gemini launch vehicle at 8.39 and 30 seconds a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've gone through a whole series of status tech checks over the last several minutes. This included Crewman 1 and Crewman 2 in the spacecraft. Tom Stafford, when he reported in, used the term that his command pilot, Wally Sherrard, used on the Gemini 6 mission when it finally was launched. Stafford reported for the third time, go, when he gave his status report. Gene Cernan reported a little after that as he uh, thanked the crew for their efforts and suggested that they all take a vacation, but then pointed out that they shouldn't start till about two seconds after ignition, which of course would be just prior to liftoff of the Gemini vehicle. Now coming up on the hold, T minus three minutes and holding. T minus three minutes and holding. The hold is expected to last for about four and a half minutes. We will be resuming the countdown at 36 minutes and 30 seconds after the hour. This is Gemini Launch Control. Reminding you again, this is an automatic hold, a planned hold to permit updating of the launch information before that uh, target vehicle comes hurtling back across the Cape here, 185 miles high, uh, in that perfect orbit uh, that it was launched into by its Atlas booster on uh, Wednesday morning. It was finishing its 29th revolution and beginning its 30th revolution as it uh, passes the Cape here. Uh, it will be met on its 33rd revolution on the spacecraft's 30th revolution. Jack Siegel at the IBM uh, Center in New York as a computer demonstration of launch windows. Let me say first, Jack, before you start on that, that we do have a launch window this morning uh, of, uh, of some 35 seconds or so for a third orbit rendezvous, uh, and then on up uh, through some uh, five uh, minutes or six minutes and 15 seconds, we can launch in order to uh, get uh, a rendezvous by the sixth revolution, and if they don't get that, then they'll stand down and may try again at a second window which opens up at uh, 11.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, with the same kind of breakdown of third, fourth, fifth, and sixth revolutions. So saying, Jack, and you look very pretty on camera there as I went through my spiel, uh, you can explain just what these windows are about. Thank you, Walter. Yes, this computer display should help us give an idea of what is involved in launch window. Here we have a circle representing the orbital path of the target vehicle, or the ATDA. Now we'll have the computer change that display so it's tilted. We pop on the Earth. Here is the North Pole. The South Pole is hidden in the equator coming around in front. And we'll put on the United States. And then we'll shrink down a dotted line onto the surface of the Earth, showing the track of the target vehicle on the Earth, Walter. Then let's show the latitude. And here we get into one of the first of the key things in launch window. You'll see that the latitude of Cape Kennedy crosses that circle uh, the orbital path of the target vehicle at these two points on this display. So if they could launch here or here, they'd be able to enter the same orbital plane with a minimum amount of fuel expended or practically no amount of fuel expended to get into the same plane. Here's a dot now representing the target vehicle. Let's start it in motion. And you'll see that as this target vehicle, the ATDA, is moving along in orbit, the Earth is also moving, rotating from left to right. So it's not only a matter of launching when you can get into the same plane, but also having that occur when you're not either too far ahead of or behind the moving target vehicle. Now, as you know, with the computer-driven display, we can stop the rotation of the Earth here. So let's do that, and we'll show a typical launch of a Gemini. Here we've stopped the picture and you'll see with this launch there is an angle and it's this angle, the wedge angle between the two that they're trying to keep to an absolute minimum. One other factor is the point that they want to be able to rendezvous just before sunrise in the dark to have that target vehicle up against the stars in the dark. So these are a few of the factors involved, Walter, in launch window. Thank you, Jack. When this uh, count is picked up here in a uh, couple of minutes now, 
at T minus three minutes. Uh, the first uh, function will be to send uh, computer update information uh, to the spacecraft. Uh, that is uh, that is updating uh, the onboard computers of the spacecraft uh, for its proper trajectory. Uh, it is important only if something should go wrong in the direction of the spacecraft and this information is needed. Here's an announcement from Jack King. Minus three minutes and holding at this time. About five or six seconds from now, we will resume the countdown. It was when they tried to do that update uh, on Wednesday that uh, there was a malfunction. This is Gemini Launch Control, T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. They've already fed information to the uh, to the spacecraft, and they'll go even if it should malfunction again today. However, uh, but they do believe they fixed it. It was in a a little a tool, small transistor module, so-called, that less than an inch square. Uh, that uh, were in the relay box of the computer. Re uh, this is Gemini chain. Launch Control. Now T minus two minutes and thirty seconds and counting. We have word here in the control center that the spacecraft computer has accepted the update information from the Mod 3 system. Uh, of course, information has also gone by hardline to the Gemini launch vehicle. Now T minus two minutes and fifteen seconds and counting. The Air Force Eastern, Eastern Test Range has given the blockhouse an OK to launch at this point. Coming up at T-minus two minutes and counting. going to stay here with the voice of Jack King. This is Gemini Launch Control, T minus one minute and 40 seconds and counting. We have a report that there was a switchover in Houston, but now we have confirmation that the update data is in the computer. We, the computer has accepted this update data, T minus one minute and 30 seconds and counting. T-minus one minute and 20 seconds and counting. All appears to be proceeding well at this point in the countdown during the final phases. The astronauts have been alerted and we have gimbaled those engines as planned. The engines have swung the first stage engines and our checkout still continues at this point. Coming up on one minute shortly. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. T-minus 60. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. We will get ignition at zero in the countdown. Some three seconds thereafter, liftoff will come. During that period, there will be a period of about 1.8 seconds where we possibly will have the capability of shutting down if necessary. T-minus 35 seconds and counting. T-minus 30. T-minus 25 seconds and counting. We're on an automatic sequence. Everything appears to be going well during this final phase. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. We have a liftoff. Looks like 39 minutes, 32 seconds after the hour. We're right on time for rendezvous. This is exactly when we wanted it. Pitch. 17 seconds. Flight dynamics reports the thrust looks good. The roll program has started. Program is completed. The pitch program has started. To get into the proper as the sun catches the rocket beautifully, goes through a little layer of clouds. Magnificent launch, it looks like Gemini. Time is roughly 3933 after the hour. Gemini 9 looks like she's well on her way. 50 seconds into the flight. The spacecraft and its booster are moving at 740 miles per hour. We are now reaching for four nautical miles in altitude. It's just about go, to go through maximum Q, that maximum buffeting that the spacecraft gets as it uh, hits the atmospheric layer about eight miles high. 
gone through max Q just now. Eight plus one minute and 20 seconds. Spacecraft is now approximately eight nautical miles in altitude. The track looks good. We are about five nautical miles downrange. Our next critical moment is the shutdown of the stage one engines of the Titan and the ignition of the stage two, the 100,000 pound thrust stage two. Those big engines should be shutting down at 230. 45 seconds and we are 12 nautical miles down range and approximately 16 nautical miles in altitude. The track still looks very good. Those big, those two big engines of that first stage booster with some 430,000 pounds of thrust coping almost unbelievable quantities of fuel. T plus two minutes, 20 seconds. The flight crew have been notified Ten, that they are go for nine, staging. Eight, seven, They're six, on their way, all right, five, and that uh, four, first stage three, cutoff should come just two, now. The right now. is now about 52 Zero. nautical miles, 50 nautical miles downrange and about 36 nautical miles in altitude, and we have Pico. You can see it there. Cut off. A magnificent picture. It looks good. The the track track that long-range camera, you could see the flare. There's a flare as the booster engines... Plus the plus two minutes, 50 seconds. First stage is cut off. Second stage has ignited properly. Everything going exactly right now. They've got 100,000 pounds of thrust for the uh, next stage of their journey. Right. Up the officer the reports that the track looks real good to him. This uh, picture is from something called Flight Dynamics Igor. and Guidance and Search and all report they look good. The spacecraft now is approximately 120 nautical miles downrange and approximately 60 nautical miles in altitude. They should have jettisoned uh, their second stage about now. Flight Dynamics says we're right down the middle. Perhaps I missed the announcement. They should have had a jettison of second stage at uh, 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the flight. A tremendous picture of them the there still. Is now about 70 nautical miles in altitude and approximately coming up on 200 nautical miles downrange. The track looks good, excellent. They also have a heat shield around the spacecraft, similar to that uh, shroud that perhaps did not jettison Flight on the target vehicle. Trans has just completed a final status check. We are green and go, and that information has been passed on to Tom Stafford in Gemini 9. In just a minute from now, the second stage should be cutting off. Gemini 9 uh, is now 280 nautical miles downrange and approximately 80 nautical miles in altitude. Now those miles you see there on the screen are nautical miles, statute miles, it's 80 miles high now, a little over 80, almost 90 miles high. And some 215 miles downrange. Five minutes. Track looks excellent. Another less than a half Gemini a minute now. Is following our plot boards here perfectly. And now about 20 seconds to second stage cutoff. Point eight. We have reached 80% of the velocity needed for orbit. Flight Dynamics says the trajectory looks very good to him. This orbit that they hope to uh, five minutes and 30 seconds be injected into is 100 by 168 miles, elliptical orbit so-called. They should have had now second stage cut off. Let's listen. Seco, the second stage engine has cut off. And now, in another five seconds, they jettison that second stage engine, Light and the spacecraft is on its own. A go for Ivar, and that is being passed on to Tom Stafford by communicator Neil Armstrong. They're now over Ivor. Stafford will burn his thrusters to correct any small in-plane and velocity discrepancies. We're showing you that second stage cutoff. We haven't had confirmation of it yet. But we 
haven't been getting a readout on every stage, and presumably second stage cutoff has taken place, and second stage jettison. We did have cutoff, but not jettison. But at this time, some six and a half minutes into the flight, the spacecraft is in orbit, uh, if all has gone well, 100 by 168 mile orbit. Six minutes and 40 seconds. It's reached its orbital speed of 17,500 miles an hour, if all has gone well, and we assume it has. It looks good so far, but we have not had that second stage jettison announcement. Going well, it's now some the seven. The from our flight dynamics officer is that Tom Stafford is thrusting aboard Germany 9. GN. Obviously, things are going well. If he's, if he's thrusting to make minor corrections, uh, as would be a plan uh, to get into uh, his precise orbit, and these are very minor uh, changes at this point. The thrust shows now has been turned off. The thrust is off. Flight dynamics says he looks Jettison. real good. We are seven minutes, Jettison. 37 seconds into the flight. They should be trailing the uh, target vehicle now by about 700. More data here. Gemini 9 should be in orbit. We do not as yet have any orbital values. As soon as we get them here, we will pass them on to you. Meantime, now. <laughs> They should be about 700 miles behind the uh, target vehicle now. T plus 8 minutes and 15 seconds. And they are about 85 miles below it. In the separation from that second stage of the Titan booster, Stafford gives a little oh, one and a third mile an hour forward thrust and to help, uh, just to help pull away after the explosive bolts are blown. Plus eight minutes and 42 seconds. The spacecraft is now passing over the tracking range of the Bermuda station. Something new on this flight too, they had windshield covers uh, for the uh, trip on in the launch phase until they got into orbit because it turned out when second stage uh, thrust uh, second stage firing took place on previous gemini flights the titan uh, this ball of fire clouded up the windows and made uh, observation of rendezvous and docking procedure somewhat difficult so they put uh, plastic covers over the windshields transparent covers that uh, the astronauts were to and 25 seconds into the flight we have a preliminary estimate on that orbit now 86 nautical miles perigee by 150 nautical miles apogee. These figures will be refined as we pass over the tracking station at Canary Islands.